Hello, welcome back everybody to Buenos Aires. We are here once again in beautiful Retiro train station. And the last time we started a video from Retiro train station, it was a fake out. We didn't go anywhere on the train. We just went around the corner to the railroad museum. It was really cool. Link to that video in the description, of course. But today, we're actually going somewhere. We're gonna get on a train and we're gonna head out to uh, the northern suburbs, Zona Norte. Because there's a town I want to see up there, a suburb, and I've heard about. It is San Isidro. So come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you want to help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's gonna help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. All right, so we have to take the Tigre line, the Mitre line to Tigre. Uh, and it looks like there's one that's at the platform right now that's leaving in like one minute. And I have to go to the bathroom, so I'm actually going to skip that one. <laughs> and we're going to go on the one that leaves at 11.31. We'll give us a chance to go to the bathroom. Maybe get a coffee or some water or something. And also, we'll be able to get a seat on the train. Because I guarantee you, if we get on that Tigre train right now that's leaving in one minute, we're going to be standing the whole way. So, see you in 15 minutes. Alright, we're here on the platform. Anden. Numero tres. There, of course, is that other one that's going to Tigre. And as you can see, everybody's like standing, crowded in the doorway because that thing is like completely, completely full. It's one of the things about the trains I've noticed from our last visit here. This is actually the first time we're taking the train in our second visit here to Buenos Aires. But in our first visit to Buenos Aires, we took the train every day, pretty much. Because we were staying, actually, out in the province, not in, uh, not in the city. We were staying down in uh, the southern suburbs in Wilde, or Wild. Not sure exactly how it's pronounced, to be honest. But uh, we were staying down there. It was really nice, I liked it. And uh, we had to take the train every day, not into this station, but into Estacion Constitucion, Plaza Constitucion, the other train station, the one down south. So uh, I know how the trains work. And basically, if uh, the, they get really full, they get really, really full, especially if you're catching a train that's like um, about to leave because they pull into the station and then they sit at the station for like five or 10 minutes waiting for people to get on. And by, if you catch one that's like about to leave, it's gonna be packed full. And because it's gonna be packed full, like you're probably just gonna be standing for your entire train ride, no matter how long it is. It could be like an hour and you're just standing the whole time, which uh, is kind of annoying. So uh, if possible, if you have the time, like we do actually, uh, catch, catch a train right as it rolls into the station. And that way you can get a seat and you'll be able to have a seat for the whole trip. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see a suburb up in uh, Zona Norte, seeing as we've already stayed in a suburb in Zona Sur, in the su south zone. Um, and. Uh, I've heard about this place. It's sort of been on my radar since the last time we were here in, uh, in Buenos Aires. I thought about staying there, um, but we ended up, like I said, staying down in uh, Zona Sur in Wilde or Wild. So I'm interested to see it. I see there's a, on, like I've looked on the map and I think there's a lot of like interesting stuff to see. And it looks like a nice little, uh, you know, provincial like province suburb. So, um, I'm, I'm interested to get back out into the province. We haven't really been out into the province yet in our second stay here. We've just been in the city. And uh, one thing to note, like if you're here in Buenos Aires and you only visit the city, that's cool. But like there's a lot of stuff going on out in the province too, um, outside of the city, in the suburbs here outside of the city, but also like further out um, in the in the province, like um, you, you could make your way down to like La Plata, which is the actual capital of the province of Buenos Aires, or like hop on any one of these trains and just head out to the end of the line 
and the the little towns that you're going to find out there are very very different it's a very different experience so if you want to experience that it's a lot more chill not so much hustle and bustle of the city uh, i definitely recommend it trains coming in now see you right there at the end of the platform coming in nice and slow and uh platform is starting to get a little crowded so the smart thing to do is you sort of spread out right find like an empty spot hope a door opens in front of you and you can get a seat so here we are San Isidro right in front of the train station and uh, it's nice looks like a pretty nice spot so far I figure we can walk up the main street here just see what everything looks like out here and you could tell immediately that it's got a very different vibe from uh, from the city, which I, I like. Like I said, if you come here to Buenos Aires and you're staying in the city, like if you have a chance to come out to the suburbs, like out in the province, do it. It's real easy. Hop on the train. A train ride only costs 640 pesos, which is like, I don't know less than 50 cents so come on out like seriously come out to the suburbs take a look come to like a little San Isidro or something or go down to uh, Zona Sur check out uh, Wilde which uh, I actually really enjoyed when I was staying there I'll have a whole video about our stay in Wilde and how much I enjoyed it I'll put the link in the description but up here this actually like this main strip here reminds me a bit of Wilde it's got a very different different vibe from the city, the suburbs. It's really nice. And if you decide to stay out here in the suburbs, in one of the suburbs, instead of staying in the city, um, you're going to be good as far as like being able to walk to get this stuff. Um, like I said, this is like this main strip here that just has, you know, everything you're going to need is going to be right in this area. And wherever you're staying, you're probably going to be able to walk to like this main strip within like 10 minutes at the most it's really nice everything's designed uh, like pretty much all of of Buenos Aires and all of the suburbs around it they were all designed before um, like before World War II so basically like before the rise of car culture in uh, in like the 50s and so because of that I mean, granted, people still drive cars. There's cars parked, you know, along the street. But everything is designed to be able to get around without a car. So, like, train station, um, there's no, like, huge parking lot or anything right next to the train station. Like, there would be in uh, a lot of places in the United States. And then out here, too, if you need to get around, from like different parts of uh, the suburbs to other parts of the suburbs. There's buses that run out here too. So you're good to go with that. This is actually really nice. You flip the camera around so you can see. You don't have to look at my face. Yeah, it's nice. Like I said, I had been thinking about this uh, suburb, San Isidro, when I came here the first time to Buenos Aires. It was one of the places where I was like looking at places to stay, um, to see, you know, like basically just like I wasn't sure if I wanted to stay in the city or if I wanted to stay out here. I didn't quite understand how Buenos Aires worked, to be honest. Um, how there's like a city, CABA, right? The Ciudad Autónoma. Uh, de Buenos Aires Autonomous city of Buenos Aires. I didn't understand that and like the idea that outside of that um, Is not technically still the city of Buenos Aires each one of these things out here You know like uh, San Isidro and Wilde that there are that there are their own, their own cities That they're suburbs because if you look at it on a map and you're not familiar with Buenos Aires it just looks like one big old city and like Wilde or San Isidro just looks like another neighborhood in the city and in effect it kind of is like that to be honest like they have their own vibe and they have their own 
you know, like system of, of government and whatnot and everything. Like there'll be like a San Isidro or a Wilde, like public works. Um, but like uh, there's no there's no separation. It's all just sprawl from the city that sprawls out for like like a, a long, long ways. So in effect, it sort of feels like uh, like it's all just another neighborhood in the city. Anyway, I think what I want to do is uh, there's a plaza up here, Plaza Mitre, which is that plaza that's up by the other train line. Now, that's the cool thing about San Isidro. It's served by two train lines. There's the Tigre line out of Retiro that we came in on, and then there's another one, the Linea de la Costa, or Tren de la Costa, right? The train on the coast. And uh, that one you actually have to pick up. It's kind of weird. You have to get it from, like, the, uh, I think it's the Mitre. It, basically, there's a line that leaves Retiro train station. Instead of going out to Tigre, um, it goes to, like, Mitre, which is a station about halfway. And right there at Mitre, you get off. And at the exact same station, you just get on a different train. Um, and that's Train de la Costa. And that also goes out to Tigre. And the Train de la Costa and uh, the, uh, the Tigre line from Retiro, they run parallel to each other about like eight or 10 blocks apart. And so like we're right now in between those two lines. And that's where like the whole commercial district of most of these suburbs is. It's in between those two lines in Zona Norte here. And uh, if, we, if we were to go, we were going north out of the train station, but if we were to go south, there'd be like a lot of like more residential stuff down there. And if we keep going north, uh, we'll end up at Plaza Mitre and we'll end up right by the other train station, which is like the uh, Tren de la Costa. So let's head over to that plaza and check it out. This whole area in between the two, uh, the two train stations is really nice, actually. Like beautiful uh, tree-lined shopping streets. with businesses all along, cafes, shops, different kinds. Like I said, in any one of these, uh, or in a lot of these suburbs out here, like it's still very um, uh, densely packed. It feels very urban, which is cool. Um, if, you, if you're familiar with suburbs in the United States, there are some suburbs, a very few suburbs that are like these. They're usually along train lines like this one um, they're like older suburbs usually they were suburbs that were built and fully established before the rise of car culture just like this and uh, you usually be able to find a main street like this with lots of shops still open um, that you can like walk restaurants and things like that and those suburbs are insanely expensive because they are so desired and so rare in the United States, honestly. Most suburbs in the United States, 100% car dependent. You need a car. There isn't usually even a train station, or if there is, it's like way, way out on the outskirts. And it's not surrounded by like a beautiful like shopping street and commercial district like this. It's surrounded by like parking lots, huge parking lots where, because people have to drive to the train station in order to, you know, get the train into the city, right? And those are all the, the suburbs that were like, you know, designed and, uh, and established after, after the rise of car culture, after like the 1950s. So something like this, you know, there are suburbs like this. This is one of the nicer ones, I think, like more, a little more upscale, but even like down in, uh, in Wilde, which I will say Zona Norte and Zona Sur are the suburbs, the north suburbs and the south suburbs of Buenos Aires. I do think there is like a divide from what I noticed from like the uh, comments in the video about Wilde is, um, you know, I talked about how much I liked that suburb and how, how I enjoyed um, staying there for you know about a month. And I got some comments of people who said like, Oh yeah, you know I'm from I'm from Wilde, or I'm from uh, you know um, like I used to be from Wilde. I know Wilde. My family's from Wilde, and they were all like, "Oh yeah, it's really great. It's nice. It's chill." I also got some comments from people who were like, 
like you're gonna get stabbed basically like you have to be very very careful it's very dangerous down there in in the you know zona sur and then <laughs> there were some replies to those comments where people were saying like oh that's just like your uh, your bias right that's like your zona norte bias and you don't really know what it's like so I kind of get the feeling that maybe it's a little bit overblown and that the Zona Sur, well, they are not as wealthy as like the Zona Norte suburbs up here, that they're not like, you know, really bad. It's not like a disaster area or anything. I stayed there for a month and I enjoyed it quite a bit and I felt perfectly safe. So that said, um, I do know that the suburbs up here in the north are the wealthier suburbs because if you take the train line all the way out to the end, you get to uh, Tigre and um, uh, what's it called? Nordelta, the Nordelta development, which is basically like the richest, 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 richest part of the Buenos Aires suburbs. Nordelta is like this um, big development that they made out there that's just full of mansions and only like hyper, hyper rich people live there. As you get further out to the north, I think in that direction, the suburbs get wealthier and wealthier. But look at where we are. Look at where we've walked to. It's beautiful. This little cafe over there, little plazoleta with a fountain. Big, beautiful church over here. We can check that out. And uh, over here, Plaza Mitre. It's really nice. All these old cobblestone streets. They're beautiful. Try not to get run over here. It would be embarrassing to get run over out in like a quiet, peaceful suburb when we've gone our entire, you know, so many months going through huge cities, Buenos Aires, Santiago, Lima, you know, with crazy traffic, especially like Lima, oh my God. And we never got run over, not once. I'm probably jinxing myself now. Beautiful plaza here, Plaza Mitre. Really nice. Everybody out, just chilling, enjoying the day. I do want to loop back and go in that church and take a look inside because it looks pretty cool. It's like got like some very, I don't know, neo-Gothic kind of uh, architecture. And uh, but right up here, at the north end of uh, Plaza Mitre, go down these big, grand, majestic stairs. And I think this is the train station, the other train station, right? I can see the train line over there. So this is the Tren de la Costa, the coastal train. Tren de la Costa. Yeah, that was like, I don't know, 10 minute walk from one train station to the other through like a nice commercial uh, nice commercial area lots of shops cafes lots of people walking around enjoying a nice sunny day it's actually uh, this today and last few days been surprisingly warm not that it ever gets like insanely cold here in Buenos Aires um, it gets like in the I think like at the coldest, it gets down like below freezing, but only like at night. And during the day, usually ranges between, at least so far that I've been here, it's been ranging between like, um, I don't know, like high single digit in Celsius, so like eight or nine degrees Celsius, um, up to like 15, 16 degrees Celsius. Now in Fahrenheit, or uh, United States numbers, that's like, uh, I don't know, high 40s up to like low 60s. I think, I don't know. You know, honestly, <laughs> I used to, uh, when I first when I first came down to South America, I couldn't do the, Celsius, the Fahrenheit to Celsius um, conversion. I was just thinking in Fahrenheit the whole time and everything down here is in Celsius and I couldn't do the conversion. And now, I switched everything over, my, my phone, you know, everything over to Celsius, just because it's just like, 
if everything here is in Celsius, you might as well switch your everything to Celsius. And I got used to it. And I have an idea of like what different temperatures are. Um, but sometimes I have trouble like doing the conversion in my head. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Never thought I would get, get around on Celsius because that was the hardest one. All the other conversions, it's pretty easy to do in your head, but Celsius was kind of tricky. But figured it out. You know, what can I say? I'm learning. Anyway, look at this beautiful plaza. Look at it. Really nice. I'm already glad we came down here to San Isidro. Like I said, it's nice to get out of the city. And uh, there is one thing I'm kind of interested in seeing here. It's about, uh, I don't know, three, four blocks over that way. As a museum, uh, the Pu Pueyrredon, Pueyrredon Museum. It's the, uh, it's the former estate of Juan Martin de Pueyrredon, who uh, was like a general and a politician in the uh, late colonial era and then also like the early independence era of Argentina. Um, right after the declaration of independence here in Argentina, he was actually supreme director of um, the United Provinces of Rio de la Plata, basically what they called Argentina back in the day. And uh, he's a very important dude. And you see his name also all over uh, Buenos Aires, all over Argentina. He's like a... Uh, pretty pretty important in Argentine history and his former estate is right over here so To give you an idea about Puerto Redon in that video we made about San Martin where we went and visited his tomb right in the, uh, At the Cathedral de Buenos Aires And I mentioned that like It was an amazing feat for Henry uh, for Jose de San Martin because he had to like be constantly going back to Buenos Aires in the middle of like a civil war and like trying to negotiate to get more funds out of, uh, you know, the power centers in Buenos Aires. Uh, basically, for a long time, that's who we were talking about, was, was uh, Puerto Heron. And um, actually, there's a story where Jose de San Martin, when he wanted to uh, raise his navy to sail up to Peru, he uh, managed to negotiate 500,000, um, I guess, at that time, pesos, was it? I don't know, 500,000 of, uh, yeah, I think pesos, 500,000 of the unit of money at the time. And uh, that was enough to, like, you know, get the fleet of the size that he wanted. And so he traveled from Buenos Aires back to Cujo province, back to, like, Mendoza. And during that trip, he, uh, Puerto Rodon, like, changed his mind. <laughs> And when he got to Buenos Aires, he got a message that he, like, was only going to be able to get, like, one-third of that amount of money. So, Jose de San Martin, at that point, he, like, retired. And uh, it was totally a bluff. Um, Puerto Heron and um, the power centers in Buenos Aires, the powerful people there, they knew they needed San Martin, right? They needed Jose de San Martin because he was such a, like, famous and powerful figure and also, like, uh, a general with, with lots of experience. And they needed him. They were going to need to keep him on like their uh, their good side. Uh, so <laughs> the bluff worked, and then he he got a message that he was going to get the full five hundred thousand, and he was able to use it um, along with some money that he raised over in Chile to like raise the fleet and uh, and sail up to uh, to Peru. And the rest, as we say, is history. If you want all that information and more. Check out that video about uh, Jose de San Martin and maybe some of the older videos we made about Jose de San Martin also because he's like super important, super important dude. All right, let's walk back up, check out that church. And, uh, and then I think we're gonna go over and see if the Puerto Heron Museum is actually open. Now, of course, like a lot of things in Argentina, the uh, information that I get on the internet is not consistent. Google Maps says it's uh, closed today. The website itself says in one part of the website that it's closed today, and another part of the website says it's open today. So, who knows? <laughs> we may have come out here uh, and not be able to see the Puerto Rodon Museum today, but hopefully we will. Hopefully we'll be able to see it. All right, we're here outside the the church here, really beautiful. 
Very cool neo, sort of neo-gothic uh, looking architecture. Little dog. Little dog out here. And uh, right outside I noticed this. This is uh, like, these are all um, different plaques to celebrate like the anniversary of something. And basically what it is in 1806, August 1806, um, the British had invaded uh, Buenos Aires. And this is like a call from Puerto Redon, an order for you know, basically like everybody to get their horses and their guns and their troops and like meet up and form up a militia to then like meet up with Liniers, Santiago de Liniers in Montevideo and like uh, basically help him, Santiago de Liniers, land his troops from Montevideo here in, uh, in Buenos Aires. So, like I said, the, uh, it's an old suburb. <laughs> There's a lot of history up here, um, you know, outside of, uh, outside of the city of Buenos Aires back in 1806. They were mounting up on horses and getting guns and going to fight the British. Pretty cool. And they won, by the way. So everybody speaks Spanish here and not English. Except me. I speak English and a little bit of Spanish. Anyway, let's go inside. I want to go in and film inside here. I want to be quiet, of course, because I think there may be a service going on and we don't want to be that guy, but let's go check it out. So it looks like the cathedral here was built between 1893 and 1898, which is about the time that I thought. Most of the neo-Gothic cathedrals we've seen, like the uh, uh, Basilica Voto Nacional in, um, in Quito, and also the cathedral in Cuenca, those are all around from the same time but it looks like it was built on the site of a chapel that was inaugurated here in 1708. So even though the cathedral's only been around for like a little over 100 years, you know, 100, 125 years basically, the, uh, the parish itself has been here for much longer. Let's take a look inside. Well, very beautiful inside. Inside the church, very beautiful, just as outside. And uh, another thing about like older suburbs like this, you know, that are <laughs> hundreds of years old, uh, cooler churches. Like, let's be honest, from a strictly architectural uh, standpoint, like, come on, you can't beat that, right? If you went to a suburb that was like, you know, from 1960s or 70s, I don't think there's going to be a church that's that impressive there. And that one is quite impressive. So, all right, I think it's time we head on down and see if the Pueyrredon Museum is actually open. Keep our fingers crossed. On our way down to the, uh, the site of the Pueyrredon Museum, this nice little street, this really nice old architecture along here. Cathedral's right over there, and uh, pretty fancy looking hotel, Hotel del Casco. Pretty cool. The the uh, European style architecture that Buenos Aires is famous for, they call it the Paris of South America, right? It extends out here apparently to uh, San Isidro as well. It's really nice. This is a very chill kind of uh, uh, 
a chill town also. I get I get immediately very chill vibes from this town, which uh, is cool. Been looking for that actually. You know, I love Buenos Aires, I really do, obviously. Came here for a month and then went and traveled around and came back. So obviously I love it, but sometimes being in a giant, you know, metropolis like Buenos Aires, just like, <laughs> it starts to get to you, you know? And you just need like a quick, like for even just a few hours, like a little day trip out to like a little, uh, just a little suburb, right? Just, just outside Buenos Aires, it's nice. It's nice to get out here. And of course, beautiful tree-lined streets, which is a uh, something that you see all over neighborhoods in Buenos Aires in the city, but also out here in the suburbs. Like lots of trees, man, I love it, I really do. This actually, with all the trees, reminds me a lot of Mendoza. Mendoza in Argentina, beautiful city, lots of trees. Lots of trees, which is crazy because it's like in the middle of the desert, sort of. I mean, more or less. They have these crazy irrigation systems where they run, uh, they run like water all the way through these canals that like run along the street. And um, it, it keeps all the trees irrigated so they can grow huge, huge trees and tons of them, like dense, like this, basically, um, in the middle of the desert. Super cool. Got a lot of videos from Mendoza when we visited there. That was a really great city. I really enjoyed Mendoza. I'll put the playlist to all those videos actually down in the description. You can check them out. Because um, it's a very cool city. Very, very cool. Would recommend visiting 10 out of 10. Check out this house here. It's Tudor style house. Right? British, British architectural style Tudor style house with Spanish tile roofs. That uh, reminds me a lot of um, uh, Coughlin, the Coughlin neighborhood that we visited last time we were here. Made a video about like finding um, uh, British influence and uh, like British influences in, uh, in Buenos Aires. And even though Coughlin was named after an Irishman, uh, the neighborhood has a lot of like houses like this, these like Tudor style um, houses with like British or English architectural influence. It's a very cool neighborhood actually. And uh, there's some of that here too, in San Isidro apparently. I imagine houses like this in this neighborhood are relatively expensive. Tell me down in the comments, is San Isidro like really expensive? I know it's probably not as expensive as like Tigre out at the end of the line, or Nord Delta of course. But, walking around here, <laughs> get the feeling, I get the feeling it's a little bit pricey to live here in San Isidro. I mean when you're walking around and there's like big Beautiful houses behind gates with uh, trees just growing oranges like out here. Makes me think. Makes me think it's a little bit pricey. I think right here is the Pueleron Museum. I think it's this on the corner here. Maybe? Let's see. We'll figure it out. I'll figure out where it is. I'll figure out if it's open. How we get in. And uh, check back in. Alright, so there it is right there. Museo Pueron. And the gate is open. Good sign. Gate open makes me think museum open. So let's go uh, 
Let's go see.